history of the building of Storm's End is known to us only through the songs and stories, like much of the history from the dawn age of Westeros and the age of heroes. The tales of Durin's Godgrief and Fair Eleni, daughter of two gods, supposedly, as the legend says, it was the seventh of the castles that Durin raised that became the castle of Storm's End that we know today. However, many have speculated that this number may well be a later concoction of the faith, where the number seven holds great significance. Storm's End is surely one of the oldest castles in all of Westeros. Much like Winterfell in the north, it is famed and well known even in the furthest east of Essos. But when compared to the ruined ring forts of the First Men, or even the First Keep of Winterfell, which a past maester in the service to House Stark examined and found to have been rebuilt so many times that precise dating could not be made. The great tower and perfectly joined stones of the curtain wall of Storm's End seems much beyond what the first men were capable of for many thousands of years. It's a question that has puzzled the maesters and historians still to this day. The great effort involved in raising the wall was one thing, an impressive feat in itself, but that was more of a brute force effort than the high art needed to make a wall where even the wind could not find purchase. Even the best built castles in Westeros, even ones recently built, you will still feel the odd draught of wind creeping through the masonry. But this is not the case with Storm's End. Placed in the windiest of all places in Westeros, it's as if the castle is completely sealed, with not even the smallest gap for wind to penetrate. Archmaster Viron speculates that the tales claim that the final form of Storm's End was the seventh castle, and it shows a clear Andal influence. And if true, this suggests the possibility that the final form of the castle was only achieved after the coming of the Andals to Westeros. Maybe perhaps the castle was rebuilt on the site of the earlier castles, but if so, it was long after Durin God's grief and his fair Eleni had passed from this earth. And much like the ruins of the first keep of Winterfell in the north, we will never know the truth of the matter. Currently, Storm's End is the seat of House Baratheon, the Lord's Paramount of the Stormlands. But Storm's End was once the ancestral seat of the Storm Kings of House Durandon, extending back many thousands of years. The castle is said to be protected by spells, woven into its very walls that prevent magic from affecting it or passing through it. The castle passed to House Baratheon after the downfall of the Storm Kings during Aegon's conquest with Oris Baratheon, half-brother of Aegon, marrying the daughter of the last Storm King, forming House Baratheon. Currently, at the start of the main book series, Renly Baratheon, the youngest brother of King Robert Baratheon, is Lord of Storm's End. Storm's End itself is surrounded by one massive outer curtain wall, 100 feet high and 40 feet thick on its thinnest side, and nearly 80 feet thick on its seaward side. It is composed of double course of pale grey stones, with an inner core of sand and rubble. The wall is smooth and curving. On the seaward side, there is a 150 foot drop below the wall, into the sea. There is no safe anchorage by the castle, but there is a very small cave brave sailors could try and access that runs under the keep. Oddly, when compared to the other grand castles of Westeros, Storm's End only has one tower, a colossal drum tower crowned with formidable battlements, making it look like a huge spiked fist thrusting towards the sky from afar. The tower is so large that it comfortably contains the granary, barracks, armory, beast hall, and lord's chamber all at once. The main hall of the castle is called the round hall. The maester's cell and the rookery is located at the top of the tower, which is windowless, on the side facing the sea. The seaward side of the castle stands upon Durin's Point, a high white cliff overlooking Shipbreaker Bay. Storm's End has never fallen to storm or siege, the historians tell us. During Robert Baratheon's rebellion, Lord Mace Tyrell of Highgarden laid siege to Storm's End for a whole year without any result. If the garrison's supplies had been sufficient to the task, the castle may very well have held out indefinitely. But the war had come quickly, and the storehouses and granaries were only half full when the siege began. By year's end, the garrison, under Robert Baratheon's brother, Stannis, were sorely tested by hunger and want, only to be saved by a common smuggler who managed to slip through the red wine blockade one night, carrying a load of onions and salt fish to Storm's End. Thus, the castle was able to stand unbroken until Robert Baratheon defeated Rhaegar Targaryen on the Trident, 
and Lord Eddard Stark arrived to end the siege. Old wise tales of the Stormlands claim that every 77 years, a storm greater than all others comes howling down upon Storm's End as the old gods of the sea and sky try once more to blow Durin's seat into the sea. It's an interesting tale, but it is still a tale. The records of the maesters of Storm's End show there is a fierce storm nearly every year, especially in the autumn, and while some are greater than others, there are no records that show unusually powerful storms every 77th year. The greatest storm in living memory was in 221 AC, last year of the reign of King Aerys I Targaryen, and the greatest before was a storm in 166 AC, 55 years earlier, which supports the idea there is no credence to the old wise tale 